Hi everyone, it's Evangeline here at U Trailer, and today we're looking at the Swagman XC2 two bike rack here on our 2017 Mazda 3. So the Swagman XC is a really nice minimalist bike rack. So if you're looking for something that is affordable, it's a platform rack. It has the perks of being a platform rack, but you do not want to pay for extra features or bells and whistles that you don't think you want or need. This might be a good option for you. So we have the Swagman XC with our bike mounted to it already. So let's take a look at the way our bike is mounted. So we have wheel loops holding those tires in, and we also have this frame mount. So the frame mount is a traditional hook style that comes down and just secures the bike by its frame. So if you do have, let's say, a carbon frame bike, this might not be as ideal, but for most of your regular bikes, your road bikes, your mountain bikes, this is the traditional option. So when you want to take your bike off, all you need to do is to remove this hook. To do so, you just press that lever on that hook and then lift up. Now from here, you can either tilt it back and then lift it over. What I like to do is actually just take this hook completely off, put it to the side. I can then even lower my mast if I want to, but right here, this is enough clearance for me to just lift it over that mast, and then I'm ready to go on a bike ride. And with the bike out of the way, we get to take a closer look over here at our bike rack. So right over here, we're gonna put this hook back into place. Now make sure it is lined up where that hook is facing that frame, and you can see how it ratchets down to secure that bike. I'm gonna put it all the way down here, because there's something extra special here with the Mazda 3, and it's pairing with this bike rack. So usually, with um, a bike rack, since I do not get to tilt this one away, I would usually have to lower this mask completely. But here with the Mazda 3, you can see with the hook all the way down, I actually have enough clearance between our door as well as our hook to open my hatch. So then I can grab anything out of my trunk like my bags, my helmets, my water without having to take my bike rack off. I would still need to take my bikes off, but this does save me a little bit of time and gets me back out onto the trail a little bit faster. This has a weight capacity of 35 pounds per bike. If you do have maybe extra heavy electric bikes, this will not be a good fit, but most of our bikes here at E-Trailer, they're just regular bikes, are within that 35 pound weight capacity. We also have these hoops, and these hoops can accommodate for different wheelbases. So you just rotate this knob in order to loosen it, and from there you can move that loop back and forth just to get the best fit on your bike. Also, if you have handlebars that collide with, let's say, the seats of your other bike, this will help you move them around as well. Now let's take some measurements. Whenever you have a bike on your vehicle, there's gonna be some length added to the back of it. So measuring from our bumper to the end of the bike rack, which is by these loops, it's gonna be 20 and a half inches. Now that's actually pretty compact for a two bike platform rack, but it's still gonna be a length you're gonna to have to remember whenever you're backing into your garage or trying to park into a really tight spot. Let's also take a look at ground clearance. Ground clearance is right over here at the center. So below that to the ground, it's gonna be 12 and a half inches. Now at the shank to the ground, it's gonna be nine inches. So you do have that slight shank rise, which is gonna be helpful because this car sits, especially with this hitch, this hitch sits a little bit closer to the ground compared to other taller SUVs or trucks. So you're gonna want that ground clearance whenever you go up steep inclines like driveways or hills, you're gonna appreciate that slight shank rise. Now, another thing we're gonna take a look at is how to make this a little bit more portable. So this does not fold up, but what it does is that the arms fold up. Let's take a look at how to do that. We have these pins and you're just gonna pull this pin and then you're gonna lift up on the arm 
line up the holes and then push that pin straight through. So that's one arm and then here's our second arm. Just line that up and then secure it here in the middle. And then it's now a nice portable bike rack. You're definitely gonna want it in this position if let's say you're not planning on driving around town. You also don't want it taking up space kind of behind your vehicle. You want it to be portable. You're gonna have it like this. Also, if you plan on storing it, on storing it in your garage or even in your trunk, this is the perfect way to do so. So we'll take some measurements real quick about like the closest point. That's gonna be from your bumper to that bike rack, seven and a half inches, so plenty of clearance there. As for how it sits here on our Mazda 3, so our window will still be mainly open. Our tail lights are completely visible. Now our license plate is right over here and our backup camera is slightly offset towards the drivers, but it is still in this general direction. So you are going to see your bike rack in your backup camera if it is folded up. If that's a big issue for you, you may want to put those arms down. And if you're not carrying any bikes, you may want to put the mask down. You're still going to be able to see behind you and you'll still be safe on the road. But you do have different options when it comes to the view in your backup camera. Let's talk about how it fits into our hitch. So we have here an inch and a quarter shank because our Mazda 3 has an inch and a quarter hitch receiver. We have a class one hitch on there right now. And that's okay because this bike rack is class one compatible. Now I also have a hitch pin alignment collar here from e-trailer. It does not come with the bike rack, but I did add it because it makes it so much easier just to pop that bike in and I don't have to look back and forth to make sure I'm lined up. I can just pop it in and then tighten down my anti-rattle bolt. So that anti-rattle bolt comes with a wrench to tighten it down, but I recommend picking up a ratchet wrench with a three-quarter socket. That's why I use, because it's so much easier that way. But with the anti-rattle bolt tightened down, you can see here that our shank itself is secure to the bike rack. If there is any movement, it would be coming from these bolts holding the arms into place, but that shank has that rattle taken out, making for a smoother ride for your bikes overall. So, my final thoughts about the Swagman XC2 is that it's a really nice and simple bike rack. It does what you need it to do. It can carry your bikes from one place to another. You don't have to compromise with a hanging style bike rack where the bikes may accidentally swing into each other. This is really nice if you want a platform rack at an affordable price. Now if you want some extra premium features, we also have those here at eTrailer.com. Things with tilt away, swing away, fold up. But if you just want something nice and simple, this may be a really good option for you. So this was a look at the Swagman XC2 2 bike rack here on our 2017 Mazda 3. This is our test course. Let's start with the slalom. This shows side to side action, such as turning corners or evasive maneuvering. Then onto our alternating speed bumps. This shows twisting action, such as hitting curbs, potholes, road debris, or even uneven pavement. Last of all, the solid speed bumps. This shows up and down action, such as driving through a parking lot or parking garage, or driving in and out of a driveway.